Hi everyone, welcome to another dose of math medicine. Your first aid kit in mathematics. Don't forget to share, like, type your comment or question below and subscribe for more math meds. Today's session is covering concepts involving points on the Cartesian plane and the graphs of straight lines, their gradients, intercepts and equations. Question number 1. Letter A state the coordinates of each point in the Cartesian plane below. When we say coordinates, we are talking about the position of a point in terms of horizontal x-axis and vertical y-axis. We write coordinates of a point in an ordered pair of x value and y value and write them inside a pair of parentheses or brackets. Let's take this point located at the intersection of the two axes with coordinates of 0, 0 or known as the origin. The position of point A is 3 units to the left of the origin, that's an x coordinate of minus 3 and 1 unit upward, a y coordinate of 1. Hence the coordinates of point A are negative 3 and positive 1 in closed brackets. For the coordinates of point B, from the origin it is 3 units to the right, so it's positive 3 x coordinate. And 2 units upward, it's positive 2 y coordinate. Hence the coordinates of point B are 3 and 2 in closed brackets. The position of point C is 3 units to the left of the origin, hence a negative 3x coordinate and 2 units downward, hence a negative 2y coordinate. Therefore, the coordinates of point C are negative 3 and negative 2 in closed brackets. Lastly, the position of point D is 2 units to the right of the origin, hence a positive 2x coordinate, and 1 unit downward, hence a negative 1y coordinate. Therefore, the coordinates of point D are positive 2 and negative 1, in closed brackets. Question number 1 letter B. Write down the quadrant of the following points. Point L with coordinates negative 2 and positive 1. Point P with coordinates negative 3 negative 2. Point J with coordinates 8 and negative 8. And point H with coordinates 5 and 0. But, what is a quadrant? When the x-axis and y-axis intersect at the origin, they divide the entire space of points into four quarter regions, called the quadrants. These quadrants are named using Roman numerals and counterclockwise, quadrant 1 being containing both positive x and y coordinates. Quadrant 2 is to the left of quadrant 1 containing all the points with negative x coordinate but positive y coordinate. Quadrant 3 is located below quadrant 2. It contains all the points in space having both negative x and y coordinates. The fourth quadrant is to the right of the third quadrant and right below the first quadrant. It contains all the points in space having positive x coordinates but negative y coordinates. So, can you identify the quadrant where points L, P, J, and H belong to? By locating the point using its coordinates, point L belongs to quadrant 2, make sure to use the Roman numeral symbol of 2. Point P belongs to the third quadrant while point J can be found in fourth quadrant. But how about point H? Which quadrant does it belong to? Does it belong to quadrant 1? Or to quadrant 4? Can you guess the quadrant number of point H? Since it is not found on either region, then we just say, it is on the x-axis. Question number 2. Plot the following points and join them in the order given. Minus 2 positive 4, positive 4 negative 2, positive 2 negative 4, negative 4 positive 2, and, back to negative 2 positive 4. The first point has an x-coordinate of negative 2 and y-coordinate of positive 4, its position is found in the second quadrant. Here, as marked in red x. The second point has an x-coordinate of positive 4 and a y-coordinate of negative 2, its position is found in the fourth quadrant. Here, as marked in red x. The third point, with coordinates positive 2 and negative 4, is also found in the fourth quadrant. Here, as marked in red x. The fourth point is located here in quadrant 2. The fifth and last point is basically just the same as the first point, which we already have plotted. After plotting all the respective points, we are instructed to join them in that order, resulting to this particular shape or figure. 
Question number two, letter B. Name the completed pattern. Can you say the name of this figure that we ended up with? The name of this figure is rectangle. Question number two, letter C. Find the area of the figure formed in part B. To find the area of the rectangle, we need two things, its length and its width. In this case, we do not have those two. One method that can be used is to create a big rectangle that will enclose the rectangle at its corners. The area of this big rectangle can be easily computed. We will also solve for the area of the triangles that we will not need. We will name them as area 1, area 2, area 3 and area 4. If the length of the big rectangle is 8 units, while its width is also 8 units, then its area is 8 units times 8 units is equal to 64 square units. Let us now compute for the area of the four triangles. First, area 1 which is 1 half of 2 cm by 2 cm is 2 square units. Area 2 is 1 half of 6 units by 6 units, is equal to 18 square units. Area 3 is just the same as area 2, while area 4 is just the same as area 1. Hence, to find the area of the unshaded rectangle, we subtract the total area which is 64 square units, by the total area of the four triangles which is 40 square units. This gives us a result of 24 square units. So, the area of the figure formed in part B is 24 square units. Here is the other method of solving the area of the same rectangle we just solved. This method uses the idea that the distance between two points represents as the length or width of the rectangle. The distance formula is given as the square root of square of x sub 2 minus x sub 1 added by the square root of y sub 2 minus y sub 1. Follow the video on how this distance formula was used to find the same area of 24 square units. Let's go to question number 3. Cross out the points which are not on the straight line y is equal to 2x plus 5. To know a point is on a line is to check whether the mathematical statement is true or not after substituting the x and y coordinates into the equation of the line. If the mathematical statement is wrong, that means, the values used for the x and y variables do not make the equation of the line true. Let us check each point one by one if they will give a true statement or a false one. Question number 4. Study the straight lines below. Write down the line that satisfies the description. A line with gradient 0. 
A line with gradient zero can be imagined as a line that is flat or horizontal. Hence from the given lines, it is line number four that has a gradient zero since it is horizontal. A line with a positive gradient less than one. An example of this is when the gradient is one fourth. The numerator one indicates number of rise units, while the denominator indicates the number of run units. Hence, a gradient of one fourth means that from a certain point, take one unit upward and take four units to the right. From the given list, the line that does this manner of small step upward but long run is line number six. A line with a gradient of one. A line with a gradient of one is like a rise of one unit and a run of one unit to the right. There is equal number of in rise and run units, therefore making this line equally distant from the x and y axis. From the given list, the line that has this characteristic is line number 2. A line line with positive gradient more than 1. A gradient of 3 is an example of a gradient more than 1. In fraction form, we can write 3 as 3 over 1. Hence the rise is 3 units while the run is just 1 unit, resulting to quite a steep line. So from the list of lines, it is line number 5 that shows this characteristic. A line with a negative gradient. A negative gradient implies that the line is showing a downward behavior from the left to the right. Hence, from the list, the line with a negative gradient is line number 1, since it is going downwards, from the left to the right. A line with an undefined gradient. A line is said to have some rise units but with no run units, hence, is a vertical line. Having no run units make the gradient fraction divided by zero, impossible to solve, hence the term, undefined gradient. From the list of lines, it is line number three which has an undefined gradient. Question number five. Find all the values of x and x plus four is greater than negative three. This is an example of an inequality with one variable. To find all the values means that any value of x that will make this inequality correct is a possible value. Not only whole numbers. X could be a fraction or very small decimal. To solve an inequality is similar to solving equations. We only do not see an equal sign, but an inequality symbol. Since there are infinite number of possible values of X that is greater than negative 7, we provide a graph or a number line to show all the values of X. Question number 6. If 3 comma 7 is a point on the line KX plus 3 Y equals 37, find the value of K. If you can recall, if a point is on a line, it means that its x and y coordinates can be substituted into the equation of the line. And in this question, it is already given that 3 comma 7 is on kx plus 3y equals 37 line. By substitution of the x and y values, and solving the resulting equation, k is 16 over 3 or 5 and 1 third. Question number 7. A straight line passes through the points 0, 5 and 2, 13. Letter A. Find its gradient. Letter B. Find its equation. Let us sketch and imagine that is the straight line that passes through the point with coordinates 0 and 5 and another point with coordinates 2 and 13. To find the gradient of the line is to find how many rise units overrun units from this point to the other point. When you say rise units, this refers to the vertical difference of the points, hence, involves the y values. On the other hand, run units refer to horizontal distance of the two points, hence involving the x values. In this case, the vertical difference from 5 to 13 is 8 units, while the horizontal difference from 0 to 2 is 2 units. Hence, the gradient of this line is 8 over 2 or m equals 4. The general equation of a line is in the form y equals mx plus c. So we have the gradient already, the equation must be y equals 4x plus c. But the point 0 comma 5 is a y-intercept. Therefore the equation of the line is y equals 4x plus 5. Question number 8. The equation of the line is x divided by 3 plus y divided by 4 is equal to 1. Letter A. Find its gradient. Letter B. Determine the x and y-intercepts. If the equation of a line is written in the form of y equals mx plus c, it would be easy to identify the gradient of the straight line, that is, the coefficient of the variable x. In this case, the given equation is not in y equals mx plus c form, therefore it is imperative that we transform this equation. 
to transform an equation is to rearrange the terms of the equation but is still equal and the same with the given equation. Now, this equation also contains fractions, which others find quite complicated. Let us simplify this equation by multiplying the LCM of the denominators 3 and 4 on both sides of the equation. LCM is the smallest number that can be divided by 3 and 4. Thus, the LCM is 12. Multiplying 12 to the left side and to the right side simultaneously means to distribute and multiply 12 to each term of the equation. So 12 is multiplied to the term x over 3, at the same time, 12 is also multiplied to the second term y over 4 and to the right side, 12 is multiplied to 1. This process results to a simpler version of the equation, which is 4x plus 3y equals 12. Since we want to follow the y equals mx plus c format, the 4x must be transferred to the right side of the equation. This manipulation further results to 3y equals negative 4x plus 12. And by dividing both sides of the equation by 3, the equations turns out to be y is equal to the negative 4 over 3x plus 4. Hence, the gradient is the coefficient of x, which in this case, is minus 4 over 3. The x and y intercepts of a straight line are those points in which the line crosses the x-axis and y-axis, respectively. This being the y-intercept and this, the x-intercept. At the y-intercept, since the point is on the y-axis, therefore its x-coordinate is zero. In the same way, at the x-intercept, since the point is on the x-axis, the y-coordinate of the point is zero. Knowing this, we will use any of the three equations of the line, and substitute those given information. For the x-intercept, it is given that y equals 0. By substitution and by solving, x is equal to 3. Likewise, for the y-intercept, it is given that x equals 0. By substitution and by solving, this results to the value of y which is 4. Study the next numbers and see if you follow the working. Take note of the difficult steps and ask your teacher about it, or type down in the comments below and we'll surely get back to you as soon as possible.